I'm sure you've heard of TOR, but if you haven't, it's an acronym that stands for the Onion Router. And with the TOR client, we are able to have a highly anonymous web browsing experience because our connection will get routed through three different encrypted proxies, each of which are only aware of the proxy that they are connecting to or getting packets from. So proxy C would know the destination server that you're connecting to, as well as proxy B, but it is totally clueless about proxy A or U, the client who is originating the connection. Likewise, proxy A knows that you are connecting to it and it knows about proxy B, but it is totally clueless about proxy C as well as the endpoint that it is connecting to. This is because the proxies strip away all the unnecessary information. They don't have any history about where the connection is coming from or where it's going to. It only knows the next hop in the Tor network. So since Tor is highly focused on privacy and security, in my opinion, it's pretty useless to use it inside of Windows, which is more focused on being spooky and bloated. So let me show you how to get Tor up and running in Linux. First thing you wanna do is open up your browser and head on over to torproject.org forward slash download or if you're already on their main website, torproject.org, just click this download link here that says download the Tor browser. And of course, we wanna download it for Linux. So click on that. And it's going to download a tar.xz archive file. So we're going to need to unpack that. I'm just going to use the GUI for this example. And so it will bring you to the contents of it. So you have this Tor browser in US, and then you have some other stuff nested inside of it. But what we want to do is extract this entire folder here, Tor browser in US. So go ahead and extract that. And I'm going to do it to my home folder, and I'm going to create its own little folder to go inside of. I'm just going to call that Tor. So I'm going to create that and then extract it here. And it's just going to take a couple of seconds to extract it. And then we want to show the files. So you see here we have the same folder, Tor Browser N US. So we can go ahead and close our archive manager now and then go into this folder. And you see we have this application here called the Tor Browser Setup. So go ahead and click that. And the icon is going to change. So now you're brought to this dialog box to connect to Tor, and we have two options. We can either connect or we can configure the Tor browser. Now, for most people, you're only going to need to hit connect, but if you're in a country with extreme censorship, such as China, you'll want to first configure the Tor browser to use a bridge because the Chinese government can see if you're using the Tor browser without a bridge, and at the very least, they're going to block the connection, but they may possibly arrest you as well. Luckily, I'm in America, so all I have to do is hit connect. And then this is going to start up the connection with some things uh, telling you what it's doing here. And then this is what the Tor browser looks like when you first connect to it. So in the upper right-hand corner, we have um, this icon that kind of looks like a shield. We can click on that and then we can take a look at our security settings. So by default, Tor will be on the standard security setting. This is a lot less strict than how Tor used to be because this setting actually allows JavaScript and remote fonts, which could potentially be a security risk. So if you're extra paranoid, you can disable them by changing to safer or safest. And then this is going to disable things like um, JavaScript as well as remote fonts. Now, by default, Tor is pretty damn good at hiding your IP. There is no web RTC leakage, and you can check this for yourself by going to ipleak.net. And what ipleak.net is going to do is it's going to check what your IP is giving out when you try to connect to it, 
but it's also going to try to detect what your IP is through WebRTC as well. So you can see here that my IP addresses are both Canada, Quebec, as well as Austria. So maybe there is a little bit of WebRTC leakage because it's reporting one country and then another different country, but neither one of these are countries that I'm actually in. So as far as I'm concerned, all of the settings are going to be good enough. Maybe it's leaking from another one of the proxies that are in the chain I'm connecting to. Now, another good practice for when you're using Tor, especially if you're not going to use one of those safe settings that disables JavaScript, is that when you start Tor, leave it at the resolution that it is set to by default when it starts. And this is because websites can actually see what resolution you're using when you connect to them if you have JavaScript enabled. And this information could be used to fingerprint you. For example, if you use Tor and that JavaScript reveals that you have a widescreen 4K monitor, this greatly increases the likelihood of someone identifying you because how many 4K widescreen monitors do you think are going to browse on Tor on any given day? Not many at all. So it's a good idea to leave this so that your user agent completely matches everybody else that is using the Tor browser. And this is the real way that the uh, anonymity works on Tor is that everybody pretty much looks the same so we are able to blend in with uh, I guess some herd immunity now when it comes to navigating Tor I recommend using DuckDuckGo in fact that is now the default search engine that is in Tor and it's a great search engine to use because it has privacy in mind um, it won't think that you're a robot like Google is it is possible to uh to go to google through tor but it's going to make you fill out captchas and stuff like that and it can get pretty annoying now one of the main reasons to use tor is so that you can go to onion sites and onion site is a highly anonymous service that is only accessible through tor and they typically have a partially or totally scrambled web address like as you can see this one here uh, at the beginning is pretty much plain English where it says answers, but then after it's just a bunch of scrambled nonsense. Um, and they end in .onion instead of .com or .org. And it's also not unusual for that scrambled address to change from time to time. So where I am now is Hidden Answers, which is a pretty vanilla example of an Onion service. It's just like Yahoo Answers, but on the deep web. So the last thing that I'm gonna leave you with is a word of caution. A lot of these .onion sites are dedicated to illegal activity, and some of them actually contain some pretty sick stuff that no normal person would want to see. So read the descriptions of any .onion sites that may come up, whether you're on the uh, hidden wiki or you're using <clears throat> one, of one of Tor's um, search engines. Uh, whenever it has a description available, read that before you connect to it because there's a lot of pedophile sites that are on the deep web and anything that talks about pedos, children, or really porn in general is not a site that you're going to want to go to. There's plenty of legal porn that stars consenting adults on the clear web. So if you want to be a coomer, go ahead and do that. So that's it for this one, guys. Have some fun browsing tours and let me know any interesting sites that you find.